Hi everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions and this is the review of the Tropire Tri-Screen. When you first open the box, you will notice that it doesn't actually have much included, which I think is a good thing because besides the cables, which we'll get onto later, you just have the Tri-Screen itself and a user manual. That means you can get stuck straight in and started on setting these screens up. In terms of inputs and buttons, starting from the bottom, we have the decrease brightness or menu down button. This also features as a back button. You then have the increase brightness or menu up button. And then you have the menu or enter button. And then towards the top, we have a USB-C, which is power only, and also includes pass through charging, which again, I'll get onto later. You then have a mini HDMI port, which is video only. You then have a Thunderbolt 3 4 port, as well as a USB-C 3.1 with DisplayPort, which is video and power. In terms of the specs of the display, it has two 12-inch panels, which are 1080p Full HD IPS panels. The contrast ratio is 1000 to 1. It's got a 225 degree screen rotation with a 60 hertz refresh rate. Refresh rate, easier said than done adjustable brightness of around 300 nits, and it does feature eye care mode. As for the dimensions and weight, this comes in at 2.5 pounds, or 1.134 kilograms. The length is 31.8 centimeters, the width is 21.5 centimeters, and the depth is 2.5 centimeters. And there is an adjustable kickstand for weight support. Now, I'll be completely transparent. When I first heard of Tropire, I was looking for some screen extenders or some gadget that could fit on or around my laptop to provide it with additional displays. I wasn't really concerned about the build quality. And quite frankly, I thought, actually, these devices for the certain price range that they're in, they might not be that well built and therefore might not last too long. But on first impressions, taking this out of the box, I was pleasantly surprised. So what's actually involved in installing and using this screen or screens? Well, first of all, take it out of the box, open the two screens so they're facing you, make sure you have the two metal clips or latches or whatever you want to call them at the top. Then extend the screens open if you extend them open and then put them over the top of and round the back of your laptop screen there then should be one little plastic notch on each side this will glide down the side of the laptop screen and sit comfortably there and then the two metal clips at the top will sit on top of your laptop screen now that's the tropire tri screen attached to your laptop how do you actually connect it what cables do you need let's talk about that the machine I'm using for this example has two USB-C ports on the side that can both be used for power. Step one, plug your laptop's power cable, that's USB-C, into the USB-C pass-through charging port. This is the port on the side of the screen that has a silhouette of a battery. Step two, plug a USB-C cable into the same side of the screen where you've just plugged the pass-through power. So plug that into the USB-C port and then plug that into your laptop. Now, with the other USB-C port on your laptop, connect this to the USB-C port, not the pass-through one, but the standard USB-C port on the other monitor, on the other side of your dual screen new setup, and then make sure that's connected to the other port on your laptop, the other USB-C port, that is. Then, providing the screens have power from the pass-through, and have been connected via USB-C on both screens, you should be able to see two screens detected or two additional screens detected when you boot up your laptop and log into Windows. One thing I have noticed during the time of using this is that there is a particular angle that this is designed to be used at. For example, if you have the tri-screen attached to your laptop, if you push the laptop screen back, and you don't have the kickstand out, the screens will fall off. Part of the reason why there's a kickstand included and built in is because the metal 
clips at the top don't actually hold it in place. It just rests on top of your screen. This isn't a drawback or anything like that. This is just how it's designed. So just be careful when moving your screen. Personally, I used this for multiple days from working from home, eight hours a day. I didn't have an issue at all with the screen angle. When I first use any screen that I get, I immediately increase the brightness to the maximum possible. And that's exactly what I did for these screens. As standard, the default brightness sits at about 50 out of 100. And each time that you connect these screens, you will need to increase the brightness on each screen as it does not hold the setting. Unless there's a setting that I haven't found, in which case I apologize. And I'll leave a comment below in the comments and or the description just to clarify if I find a way to hold the brightness settings. But as of recording this video, I couldn't find a way to hold the brightness setting. Connect it up, increase the brightness on each side, job done. One slightly strange thing I found with my review unit is that on the right hand side, the directional buttons for editing things like the brightness and the menu select is actually flipped. So the right hand side, up will be up, down will be down, whereas left hand side, up will actually be down and down will be up. If you get your hands on one of these, you'll see what I mean. It just takes about 5-10 minutes of use to figure it out. It's more of a slight annoyance than a problem. As I said previously, I used these screens for hours after setting the brightness, and I really didn't care about the menus, the buttons, anything like that, as long as the view was good and I could use it comfortably. And that's exactly what happened. So, how are these to actually use on a day-to-day -day basis? Forget the specs, forget the buttons, forget how to install it. What's it actually like to use it? Well, let's go over that right now. We all know what it's like. You set your laptop up at home, you try and get on with some tasks, you've got an Excel spreadsheet open, you're referencing some document on the internet, and you think, oh, I mean, at the office I have a couple of screens, but as I'm remote or as I'm on a train or wherever, it would be really nice if I could just move things to a different screen and just have that dual screen or even tri-screen functionality that I've been used to. This really does give you that ability to do so. So for example, I set my laptop up at home to do my day's work. What I immediately went to do was have emails on one side, have Teams on the other, and I had my main task focus in the middle. And honestly, it's just a game changer, especially when it comes to working from home. When I was using these screens and I had the brightness turned up, I did notice that obviously my main laptop was slightly brighter just because it's a brand new laptop with a slightly more advanced screen technology. But they did hold their own in terms of brightness and I didn't actually notice any problems with brightness. I didn't think to myself, oh wow, it looks really silly having one in the center be really bright and the other two are very dark. None of that. It fitted in perfectly and I used it as I said, for hours each day with no complaints from me about the brightness. I'm trying to find some flaws in the image quality and the brightness and the way it looks, but honestly, I can't really find any. Granted, I'm not using this for gaming, and you're probably not going to use this for gaming either because the target audience of these screens aren't gamers. They're more of a productivity enhancer. So your Excel is on the left, your Outlook on the right, and your document in the middle. It really does an amazing job at kicking the productivity that you're going to be experiencing to the next level. Highly, highly recommended. The fact that Tropire have included two USB-C to USB-C cables, two HDMI to mini HDMI cables, as well as two USB-A to USB-C cables is a really nice touch. And obviously because the screens are on hinges, there's plenty of customization options for what angle you want the screens at. One thing to point out is that the screens are not thin bezels, they are quite thick bezels. If that's a problem for you, just bear that in mind when it comes to choosing the screen extenders. I think the reason why they're slightly thicker is because it adds to the structural integrity, I can barely say that word, structural integrity of the screen extenders. By that I mean if they were thin bezels, it would be quite flimsy and weak. The slightly thicker ones allow it to basically have more solidity when you're placing it over the top of your laptop screen. If I was to be able to talk directly to the people that created this device, Tropire, which hopefully I will be able to because they kindly sent this to me to review, the feedback that I would give them in terms of the ports is that perhaps they shouldn't be on the side, they should be on the back instead, 
you will see that the cables protrude out of the side of them when they're plugged into the ports. It would look a bit neater in terms of presentation to have these ports on the rear of the screens so that they're tucked away nicely. There's probably some design reason why that wasn't the case, or they just chose, hey, we're gonna have it on the side because it's easily accessible instead of reaching around the back and plugging it in. My personal preference would have been to have the ports on the back, but who knows, everyone's different. They probably have the details on what exactly works for consumers and how they plug things in. That's just how I feel about particular ports. I really don't think you will choose not to buy this screen because it has ports on the side rather than ports on the back. It's just something to be aware of. Even though the cable management is really good because it kind of tucks around the sides anyway, it would be better if they were on the back. During my testing, I had various YouTube videos and moving graphics and documents on the screen. I was moving windows from one screen to another, looking for any sort of ghosting or dragging of the windows that would cause some sort of blurring or anything on the screen and I wasn't able to find this. Again, I wasn't playing triple A rated games with this. I was moving the windows around, as well as having the videos play on the left and then the right, dragging it across while I was just finding my ideal productivity layout. No complaints from me in terms of the ghosting, there is none. Image quality, really, really good for what you're going to use this for. I'm trying to find flaws, I really am, but I couldn't find any in the image quality during my day-to-day -day use. I think where this device stands out really is the fact that you don't have to configure, you don't have to get some screwdrivers out, you don't have to add components, you don't have to move a lever, you don't have to build something in order to get the screens going. You literally open the box, you unfold the two screens, you expand it, you put it around the back of your laptop, you clip it together, you plug the cables in, and you're going. There's no configuration, there's no technical expertise you need to have here, there's no fiddly bits to screw in, it's all ready to go out of the box. Really, really cool. There's plenty of devices out there similar to this that you would have to screw the hinges together or clip the screens into the brackets, which just adds for complication and more moving parts. This device completely eliminates that need. It's the small things that really make a difference. If you're going to use this in public, at a coffee shop, at your workplace, around co-workers, just know that you will get questions. You will get people wondering, how have you got two screens on the side of the laptop? What cables does it use? What's it called? Curiosity is really going to be there for this. So get prepared to show it off, show the different angles of the screen, show that you can clip it on very easy, because they are going to be envious of this. And hey, you've got a cool product, so show it off. So overall then, I was really, really impressed with the Tropire tri-screen. I was going into it thinking, how good can it actually be? Are they going to be low-grade monitors? Is it going to be really weak and not very structurally sound? Definitely not. It was really, really good. And it is still good because as of recording this, I'm still using these screens on a day-to-day -day basis for my full-time job and for editing. So, hey, that says something. If you're looking for two screens or just like a screen extender for a laptop, I'm sure you've Googled it by now. I'm sure you've come across a few. But please, have a look into the Tropire tri-screen because it's been solid for me. There are a couple of weird things like a, a bit of a strange button layout and also the placement of the ports, as well as the fact that it doesn't actually clip onto the top and it can be pushed off pretty easy if you don't pay attention and have the arm out. But these are very minor things, again, that you will pick up on. You'll say, okay, I'm not going to do it that way and you'll never have that issue when using them. Thank you very much for watching, this has been Adam from Ads Productions with the review of the Tropire tri-screen.